Hi there. Let's remember the two case studies. Can you remember Mao Zedong goals, growth and development? What did he achieve? Famine and deaths. What about prohibition? They want to solve alcohol consumption problems. What did they achieve? Crime, gang wars, violence, corruption, and the Americans drank more than ever before. That brings us to a question. Why did they take such bad decisions? Maybe you're thinking in one of those points, stupidity, ignorance, maybe lack of understanding of complex system behavior, or inappropriate mental models. Let's get some help of Donella Meldos. Everyone or everything in a system can act dutifully and rationally. Yet all these well-meaning actions too often add up to a perfect, terrible result. Can you think in something like this? Of course you can. What about the tobacco industry? All workers doing their job dutifully and rationally, and the result is a real nightmare. Millions of deaths worldwide to smoke-related disease as lung cancer, heart problems, strokes, etc. But there are plenty more examples. What about the alcohol industry? The alcohol industry is as bad as tobacco industry. Think about the consequences, the alcoholism, the diseases. Among those, cardiovascular disease, chronic pancreatitis, liver disease, liver disease, cancer. And what about drunk drivers and car accidents? In this lecture, we are going to talk about mental models. As the cartoon guy says, we take our decisions based on our mental models. But what are the mental models? Let's see how J-Force defines it. The image of the world around us, which we carry in our head, is just a model. Nobody in his head imagines all the world, government, or country. He has only selected concepts and the relationships between them, and used those to represent the real system. I also like Peter Sen's definition in his book Fifth Discipline. He says, Mental models are deeply held internal images of how the world works, images that limit us to familiar ways of thinking and acting. Very often, we are not cons conscious aware of our mental models or the effects they have on our behavior. In fact, there is a lot to talk about mental models. Maybe someone could write a book about that. Jorn Wint and Colin Crook did it. I strongly recommend to read their book, The Power of Impossible Thinking. It's a very interesting book with a lot of good examples. One interesting aspect of mental models is that they are somehow invisible. Let's see the Jorn phrase. Mental models can appear simple and are often invisible. Yet, they are always there and have a significant impact on our lives. Let's begin, uh, his book begins with a story that I put in a comic way format. Um, it's about to arrive a new neighbor. Uh, let's follow the comic strip. A loud sound coming from the apartment downstairs. And the guy is thinking, what's that? The hour passes and the loud sound continues. And the guy was thinking, the new neighbor is doing that just to just annoy me. The hours pass and the annoying music continues. And the guy thinks, you have to have a little conversation. But when he goes to the apartment, knock the door and the door open, what he saw? Just a radio one. The painter forgot the radio one. Just to think about, he creates the complex picture of what's happening Based on tiny bits of information, one small part of drama happened, the sound. Most of it was created with his own mind, in your own mind. And conclusion, what you see is what you think. But I'm not going to tell all your Wind's book details. Let's have him to tell us. In my website, I put a link to your own lecture. It's a 15 minute lecture. Let's watch it now. That's the end of lecture 5. I hope you enjoyed it. See you soon.